Many women experience violence for a long time before they seek support from a domestic and family violence service or even police. So it's very important that you know that when you do reach out for support that you're not alone, that there is help available for you and that even though you may feel very isolated and as though you're having to deal with this on your own, uh, in fact there are many services who can support you. In the past to keep myself and my children safe, I try to not to argue with him, try to be uh, pleasant when he's around and I can pick up the time when things gonna happen. It's like a cycle so you will go through like a honeymoon period, everything is hunky-dory but you will know like suddenly he will be upset and you know yeah, start yelling and screaming. That's the time when I need to back off and also like get the children, don't upset dad, just do what he want us to do and if he yell at us we'll just accept the blame even though it's not my fault, I would say I'm so sorry, I apologise. And the other thing is actually to talk to those ones that you trust, say like my immediate family, to let them know that it's a um, bit of trouble at home. As time goes on, I feel more comfortable to say talk to my sister or my mum or one or two close friends because I figured out that if nobody know what's going on, when things happen, really happen, I've got no one to believe me or support me. So I think it's important to actually start opening up and um, talk to others. We know that uh, you are the expert in your life, that no one knows your situation better than you do. And we know that you will be already uh, using safety tips that you might have been uh, using f to keep yourself and your children safe. But it's important that when you need to seek support from others, that you feel okay to do that. When I contact the help service or crisis service, when they told me the information about what services are out there that I could access, that was very helpful. And also I read and learn about what is domestic violence, you know, what happened to me, it is not right. Because my husband told me that don't you think that this happened to all the couples, you know, they fight, they, you know, I believe it because of my life. I don't have experience of what family domestic violence is about, so I just believe it. In terms of friends, just simply talking to them, because they always say that it's not your fault and, you know, you don't have to put up with it. So, like, over time, it builds up to a strong case for me to believe, yes, I shouldn't be putting up with this rubbish and that I deserve better. For some women, they have time to plan for their safety. And you might want to think about uh, putting some things aside for that time when it's right for you to take that next step. So you may want to put aside a bag that's packed that might have some essential clothing in it for you. It might also have uh, some money if you're able to put some money together before you take that step. It could have some very important documents that you may need once you leave the home. The thing that I need to think of when I'm planning to leave, number one is some cash on hand so I can, I can have because um, when I decided to leave, I decided not to take any credit cards, joint accounts because um, the bank will disclose where the transaction taking place. Number two is um, very important is documents. So I make sure that I have my passport and the children's birth certificate and um, any things that show that, that I have some sort of residency. I'm a migrant, so I need to prove that, that I have that um, residency and also any student records, my graduating uh, certificate, any personal documents, that legal documents, that's also important, the marriage certificate. I then um, think about our immediate need, the clothing-wise, and uh, with two children, obviously, nappies, bottles, the pram, all sorts of things that I need to think about, that I need to put some aside, so um, every now and then I'll probably slip a nappy here, just in that emergency bag, and package. Then also uh, to think about um, who do I contact when things really go wrong. I have an emergency contact number. Once you've left the relationship, you may want to consider some other things that will keep you safe. Some of these things include a civil order, which might be called a protection order or an intervention order. And you can go to a, a a family lawyer or to the courts or to a DV service who will support you to make application for one of these orders. You may want to think about your phone and how accessible you can be by phone. 
You may want to think about other social media and how you might be accessed or how your partner or ex-partner might be able to monitor your movements. You might want to make changes to your accounts on social media. What saved me is that phone call to the support services who told me that I don't need a marriage counsellor. I need to, to come in because my life is in danger and my children's life. To have someone to tell me that and to put things into perspective, that would be my advice. Don't suffer in silence and seek help.